1986, German historian Heribert Illig started developing the phantom time hypothesis. This theory states that the years AD 614 to AD 911 never actually took place, and the early Middle Ages as we know them are a lie. Followers of this idea argue that key historical events and figures, from Charlemagne to Alfred the Great, either existed at another time in history or have never been anything more than fictional. Perhaps they were even the result of deliberate falsifications by a few powerful individuals. But is it true? Are we really living not in the 21st century, but in the 18th century? A pivotal moment behind this conspiracy was the introduction of the Gregorian calendar in AD 1582 under Pope Gregory XIII. This is the calendar we know and use today, but the Gregorian calendar is really a modified version of the Julian calendar, which was created in 45 BC. However, it had a significant flaw. It was based on lunar cycles, but miscalculated their length, so that each year on the calendar was really 10.8 minutes too long. This may seem like a small mistake, but over time the minutes added up, and in October 1582 the Gregorian calendar was designed to remedy the problem of accumulated time. To do this, it made the calendar 10 days shorter. This event sparked Heribert Illig's first concerns. He calculated that the 1,627 years that had passed since the Julian calendar began in 45 BC actually amassed a 13-day discrepancy. By skipping just 10 days in 1582 instead of 13, the new calendar only accounted for the extra time that had been accumulated up until 1282. Therefore, 300 years were missing from the Pope's calculations. But where did the Pope get an extra 300 years from to bring the calendar up to 1582? Well, the poor quality of material evidence attributed to the early Middle Ages makes this period the most likely candidate to have been fabricated. Historians of the era have always been heavily reliant on written documents, some of which have later emerged as frauds. For example, German historian Horst Fuhrmann has highlighted documents forged by the Roman Catholic Church. The fake documents claim to have been written several hundred years before they actually were, and they describe great moments of history centuries before the events are known to have happened. In fact, unreliable medieval records have been recognized as such a problem that in 1986 a large archaeological conference was held in Munich solely on that very topic. Illig's interpretation was that there was clearly something fishy going on with date calculation and counterfeit documents. What's more, theorists argue that other historical facts simply do not add up. For example, the existence of Romanesque architecture in 10th century Western Europe seems anachronistic considering the time that was supposed to have passed since the fall of the Roman Empire. The phantom time hypothesis suggests that the space between the two eras was actually much shorter than we've been led to believe. Illig also disputed the reality of Charlemagne, the king of the Franks who united most of Western Europe during the early 9th century and laid the foundations for modern France and Germany. Illig wrote that, Comparing all the biographies, I soon noticed that this ruler's achievements would have required the lives of two, three, or four normal men. The phantom time hypothesis offers possible masterminds behind the invention of the early Middle Ages. One such example is the Holy Roman Emperor Otto III, who ruled towards the conclusion of the 10th century. Dr. Hans Ulrich Niemitz argues that the Emperor actually lived during the 7th century, but wanted to reign in the year 1000 AD, as it suited his understanding of Christian millenarianism. Alongside Pope Sylvester II, he and chroniclers reconstructed the past, creating Charlemagne as the model hero he himself wanted to be. During the 7th century, when Niemitz suggests Otto III really lived, illiteracy was rife and nobody owned a clock. To find out what day it was, members of the public had to ask a priest. With both scholars and religious leaders on his side, it could have been easy for Emperor Otto to carry out such a swindle. As for the error in the Gregorian calendar, removing just 10 days instead of 13, there is a strong argument that it was deliberate. Pope Gregory XIII wanted the calendar corrected by just 10 days instead of 13 because then the date of Easter would match the official date agreed for it at the Council of Nicaea in AD 325, which was calculated using the vernal equinox. 
Nevertheless, even critics admit that the phantom time hypothesis cannot be completely and definitively disproven. So we must ask ourselves, based on the evidence available, could it really be possible that nearly 300 years of wars, people, artifacts and documents were just invented? Illing studied multiple different theories that could have supported his own. He studied everything from history to sciences to arts. He concluded that there were three different explanations for his theory. This included anachronistic architecture, inaccurate dendrochronology, and inaccurate dating on the Julian calendar. Ehrling believed that the buildings of the Middle Ages were anachronistic because they weren't stylistically the same. The most displaced was the Chapel of Aachen. Most architectural landmarks of the Middle Ages contain angular features. Nonetheless, the Chapel of Aachen was mostly styled with arches and domes. Ehrling observed that the arch styles within the building did not match the other architectural styles of the time period. Of course, within history, there have been multiple examples of arches similar to those of the Chapel of Aachen. Most, however, were not built until 200 years after the Middle Ages. With all these observations gathered, Illing came to a conclusion. This, Illing established that the phantom time hypothesis was correct due to anachronistic architecture. The third explanation for his theory was incorrect dendrochronology. What exactly is dendrochronology? It's a method of determining the age of trees based on their anatomy, most commonly the tree rings. Tree rings can give an accurate approximation of the age of trees. The more rings a tree has on its stump, the older it is. Dendrochronology wasn't introduced until the 20th century by a man named A.E. Douglas. This method of dating trees relied solely on the oldest tree known, which was produced 5,000 years prior. Illy noticed that if the age of that tree was incorrect, the age of all trees following would be thrown off. He then learned of a man named Ernst Hallstein, a dendrochronologist of whom specifically studied the trees of the medieval times. Hallstein used a method known as oak chronology, in which he specifically observed the tree stumps of oak trees. However, he could not find any oak trees to fill in the gaps of the Middle Ages. He then decided to improvise by using copper beech wood trees to complete his findings. He later learned that his findings had been incorrect, however, once he announced his observations, he learned that his old findings had already been published and unable to be replaced. Illing was shocked to have learned of this. This was solid proof that his hypothesis was correct. Illing's hypothesis had been proved to be true once again with the help of incorrect dendrochronology. See, historians know that from about the 7th to the 10th centuries in the West, not a lot happened. So little happened, in fact, that historians, some of them, got suspicious. For example, why are there so few documents that exist from this period? They wondered. The German researchers who came up with the Phantom Time Hypothesis said that it was because the Holy Roman Emperor and the Pope got together and added 297 years to the current year to make it 1000 AD. Why? Because they thought it would be neat to be running the world 
in 1000 AD. It sounds pretty far-fetched, but it's not entirely out of the realm of possibility. For example, the church is known to have forged some pretty important documents, so it's not beyond the, the realm of possibility for them to forge these documents too. Most of today's support for this hypothesis comes from Eastern Europe, part of the world where conspiratorial thinking has typically flourished. The ideas were first widely publicized around 1700 by the French Jesuit and librarian Jean Adouin, who believed that most of the art and literature from ancient Greece and Rome were 13th century Jesuit forgeries, and that most of what we regard as Greek and Roman history never transpired. His work was followed by other French Jesuits. It was ultimately championed, expanded, and widely published by the Russian mathematician Anatoly Famienka, beginning in the 1980s. Famienka used statistical analysis of ancient texts and his own mathematical notions about astronomical observations to show that Adwen had not gone far enough and that the Jesuits had forged all of Greek, Roman, Egyptian, Chinese, and Arabic history inserting nearly a thousand years of false history into the calendar. In Famienka's revised chronology, we would only have to go back in time some 900 years to meet Jesus Christ. 